Aha. Hello, my name is Alana, Director of Coaching here at Keller Williams Legacy. I know there's some people who are just getting into real estate. Welcome, welcome. Um, and I know there's some people who are going to be watching this recording later. So, hello. Um, my camera's right there, so that's why I'm like talking to that little owl thingy, as opposed to looking here. So let's talk for a little bit, and I need a timekeeper. Thank you. Um, can you let me know when it is... 1250. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The reason for that, by the way, is I have no concept of time internally whatsoever. So my like hour will be like five hours. If I just keep, I will just keep going literally. And I want to be mindful of my time and your time and everybody's time on here. So why are you here? Well, that's a great question. You're going to learn the numbers three and 201 plus. We're just going to call it 201. So those two numbers are what we're going to talk about. Three and 201. If you walk out of this room understanding what three is and defining it for yourself. And thank you. Putting a plan in place to implement to get to 201, which we'll learn about in a minute. That's all you need. That is it right there. Sounds easy? Sounds it. It's not. I'm just going to tell you right now. Okay. It's not easy. Well, let me rephrase it that it's simple, not easy. We'll explain what that means in just a little bit. We're going to understand and define a healthy database. Your database. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about command for those newer. Command is our ecosystem, it's our technology system that all of our agents uh, have included here, Keller Williams Legacy, for them with their tech fee every month. And when I say it's their ecosystem, so I want everybody, whether you're on Zoom or in person, hold up your phone. Hold it up. Please make sure it's on silent, but hold up. Now, on your phone, do you have apps? All right. What is an app you've used today so far? Any app? Oh, that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, Shelly. Yeah. She just wants the gold star. Like, you know what? Okay. All right. What's another app we used? Messages, you message someone today? Yes. Okay, cool. Like saying hi or happy birthday, whatever it was. Yes. Awesome, I love it. Uh, this morning I used the WhatsApp app. My daughter lives in Japan and that's how I communicate with her. So my drive in, she calls me on WhatsApp. That was my morning app I used. So why do you have apps on your phone? We're gonna start here. Why do you have a phone with apps? I mean, they still sell flip phones. You can go and buy a flip phone, which would be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. That would be kind of awesome. But why do you have a phone with an app or apps? Quicker. Availability right there, right? Click of a button. Love that. Anything else? Does it make things easier for you? Right? It's convenient. Did anybody have a phone back in the day with no apps? Like a flip phone? Okay. All right. So I remember I used to have the brick phone, like in my car. That was like literally a brick phone that sat, it was like this big, that sat in my car, right? And then, yep, the one on the shoulder, yep, I had that. And then it moved to like that, um, the flip phone where all you could do is just call people. Right. Oh, the chirp. Yep. And then you had, um, eventually we had this thing called texting. We're like, this is amazing. No emojis, no gifts, just a simple, hello, Shelly. How are you? <laughs> oh, okay. she texted me back. Okay. I'm aging myself. You're all welcome. And then it's morphed over time. And one day we all woke up. We're like, I'm going to get a phone, iPhone, Android, Google, whatever phone you have. Okay. Now I, I'm, I say that because in a few slides, we're going to talk a little bit about technology because here's the thing. A database is not your phone. A database is a technology system that you use that can have automation to it to make your life easier. Meaning right now I have, well, I have two databases because I have one for my own self and I have coaching. And right now my own personal one, I have over 1900, well, I have unsubscribers now. So I have over 1700 people who get an email from me every single month. I set it up in 2019. I have not touched it since at all. Haven't touched it. 
I'll add people to it, but I haven't touched it. Set it and forget it. It took me a good four or five months to set it up, but I haven't touched it since. Okay. Uh, for those here at Legacy, you all get a text on Friday. If you're not receiving these, please let us know. You all get a text on Friday that says upcoming week at Legacy or something like that, right? So Sarah, or when Sarah's out at Kirsten, goes into our system with all of you agents in our database and literally creates that little uh, JPEG, that picture that shows the upcoming trainings. And she does select all, meaning select all agents, um, upload JPEG, send. 300 plus agents get a text in about 30 seconds. We have systems in place where right now, if any of you ran a, let's say a social media ad, a Facebook ad to get capture leads, you can put it where the second that lead comes in, that potential buyer, seller, whatever comes in, they could automatically, the system, no matter what, if they, it could be a person sitting in New York on their couch at 2 a.m. in the morning, drunk, flipping on Facebook, like, ooh, look at that house. I like that. And the second they click it, our system captures it. It goes into yours. And then they all of a sudden get a text looking like it comes from you. And they're like, wow, this age is amazing. They text me at 2 a.m. Actually, it's been one Oh, sorry. It cuts off at night. It emails them at 2 a.m., but the, the text will go through that next morning. I think it's like 8 a.m. Yes, and that's for uh, legality purposes. Uh, I think it's like eight to eight, I believe, or 8.30 to eight or something. Yeah. So, but you don't have to sit there, especially if you have other jobs, you have other things doing. Oh my God, okay, I got this, got this lead in. Let me text me real quick because there's a thing in the real estate industry called speed to lead. If you can capture a person, meaning connect with them anyway, text or voice to voice within a five minute period of you getting their information, your likelihood of capturing them as a client goes up exponentially. I used to know the percentage. I know it's above 70%, but I forget the actual number now. So we're just going to say above 70. Okay. So we're going to talk about healthy database. Where contacts come from, we're going to talk about that, how to improve your database, learn to communicate with it. And let me start with this really, really important um, cause my God nationwide, the legalities that came out on this the past few years are insane and the lawsuits are even insaner. That's not a word, but I'm making it one. Uh, the telecommunication act, please, please, please follow this. Please. If someone now, if someone says I'm not interested, that just means they're not interested today. You still call them. Okay. I'm calling that person in a month from now, checking in. I'm going to wish them a happy Thanksgiving. If someone uses, they have to actually use the phrase, take me off your call list, or the other phrase, put me on your do not call list. They actually have to use those words for this to exist. If they're like, stop calling me, it's a little vague because they didn't use those words, right? When you get, by the way, anybody ever get telemarketing calls? Okay, do you ever hang up on them or be like, I'm not interested? but they keep calling. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so annoying. It's because you haven't used those words. When you get those calls and you want them to stop, you have to use those words, right? Now y'all get to learn a lesson. Um, Cause if they don't stop and you use those words, uh, last I heard is like a 10,000 fine to that person, like that person. So for you, please follow this. Okay, moving on. Come on in, someone here? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm like, hey, come on in. <laughs> Let me open the door. Welcome. Um, can technology be intimidating? Yes. Absolutely. What else in our life? Now I'm gonna get to 201, don't worry, but what else in our life? We have to take here's the thing. We have to take away the fears of the system first before we can truly adapt the 201 philosophy. Because if we have the fear, we're gonna hear the words 201, but we're not gonna do anything about it. So what else in our life is technology? Besides a phone, what else do we use? Hmm? Computers, okay. Do we ever have a life without computers for some of us? I know I did. I did. Oh, 
God bless you. I love that. She's like, nope. Load. See, you are just ahead of the game right there. We had a life. Some, many of us, some of us have had life without computers. But then all of a sudden we got computers. What about, I'm going to use a weird one, washing machines. Now, I've grown up with washing machines. However, some people didn't. Before washing machines were invented, people had to hand wash their clothes. Like, in a bucket. Okay? And wash their clothes. Some people got washing machines, but no dryers. So you hang them on the, like, my daughter in Japan has a tiny, itty bitty washing machine, but no dryer. So she grew up using dryers, so she's like, Mom! And I'm like, I just mailed you a drying rack. Throw it up there and use it, right? She had to figure out, she had to go backwards with technology. She's like, shoot, my sweaters take more days to dry now. She's to plan accordingly. So is it true that we have all had a period in life where even if we grew up in technology, has it grown? We now have this thing called chat GPT. That's a whole, and TikTok, right? And Snapchat and whatever else I'm not thinking of that exists out there. By the way, I'm not saying that you have to use all those. You do not. You can use one thing and be happy with that one thing and not use anything else, in my opinion. So it can be intimidating and we don't, we can allow it to intimidate us to a point where we don't use it or we can embrace it and say, okay, I learned how to use a flip phone. Oh, here's one real quick. Who reads the entire driver's manual? There you go. You bought a car. Who has ever read the entire driver's manual when you bought it? So how'd you know how do you work it? <laughs> Did we ever, does anybody in there have a push start car where you just push a button but back in the day you had a little key? Okay, so at one point you had to get a car with a push button. How'd you know how to do it, turn it on? Okay, what about like a, see where I'm going with this? Like all of a sudden now, you know, something like my husband has a Tesla, that's a whole nother ball game. That thing is, oh, I know I drove it once and I'm like, that is your car, not mine because I don't, mm -mm, my feet need to go. Like, I'm like, I'm literally driving home for like one mile from the grocery store, one mile. And he's like, I want you to drive it. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. And I'm like, nope, nope. Right. And he's like, stop doing it. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I think it took us like 30 minutes to get home from one mile. Okay. Like it was, it was, he goes, yeah, I don't think you should drive this. I'm like, yeah, I think you're right. I have not learned. Now, was that intimidating? Absolutely. Do I want to learn how to drive it? No, I really don't have a desire for it. I have a car. I'm good, right? That's my husband's car. But if I needed it, I probably should learn how to drive it. So, again, I say all this to say we're going to have a lot of technology in our life, right? We have the multiple listing service, right? That's a super confusing network. YouTube's your best. YouTube is your favorite tool to learn that, by the way. You can type anything on YouTube. Uh, how to create, save, search on Bright MLS. How to blah, 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 Bright MLS. Okay. I say all this to say, don't allow it. Don't allow the intimidation to cause fear into the one most important thing which is your database. Don't say, I don't understand command. I'm not going to use it because then you won't be able to follow the three and the 201. And it's going to be way harder, way harder to get to your goal if you get to it at all. Right. All right. The secret to having all the financial success you've ever dreamed of lies in two numbers. What are the two numbers? Just keep reaching that. Three and two and one. So the rule of three. Let's move this up, baby, up here. No, there you go. 78% of the top producing agents across the nation get most of their business from three sources. Now, I'm going to say the three sources, two of them have held true for like 10 years now, 20 years, 
if I'm correct. One of them is actually replaced something else about a year ago. This, when I say these three, this does not mean that you personally have to use these three as yours, but you do need to choose three, which you're gonna do in just a few minutes. So the very first one, actually, for those who did not just look at the screen, does anyone wanna guess what the first one is? Top source nationwide, top producers get their business from. What do you think it is? Number one, top, top source where agents get most of their business from. Go ahead, Shelly. Your contacts. Now, what's another word for our contacts? Our friends and family. In real estate, we call it our SOI, our sphere of influence. Think of a sphere, like a round sphere. I can't think of any other way to say it, right? And if we think of a sphere and we think of multiple circles, right, the inner circle of the sphere are those close personal people, right? Those are the people we talk to all the time, hang out with, right? Like my brother's in there, my best friend Viv's in there, right? Um, and then you have a layer right beyond that. That's your next layer of your sphere. The next layer are, you know, um, family and friends and maybe your hairdresser and people you talk to a few times a year, but you're like, I'm not going to go hang out with them. Right. Like I have cousins. We get together when there's like a this is gonna sound morbid, a death or a huge celebration, like a wedding. Right. You're like in that outer. Then you have another layer outside of that. That other layer is people who know you and who you know them. So you know how on our social media, all of a sudden we start getting all these connections and people go like we went to like college with or high school with and like I've never talked to you back then but yet now we're all connected and we're liking each other's things they know you and you know them you're connected they're in your sphere then we have you know along with all of that we also have you know do you have a dentist do you have a doctor do you have a hairdresser do you have a mechanic do you have a fill in the blank who are the people in our lives at any point do you live with anybody, whether it is significant other, a partner, a, a parent, a friend? Are you connected to someone you live with? So my husband works at a hospital. All of his network of people are part of my outer, outer circle of my sphere because one degree of separation. They know me through him. Unless he never talks about me and I'm, a, you know, I don't exist. That's a whole other story, but that's not true. Um then that'd just be weird. Okay, so your sphere. Past clients, by the way. When you have a client, they, they're now in your sphere. The next one is open houses. Hosting an open house, right? When you don't have your own listings, here at Legacy, you can tap into our agent's listings to call them to host an open house. There's an agent that we actually have here who Monday... So she takes one hour on Monday. She time flies. So in her calendar, one hour of lead gen is actually pulling up our inventory of listings for this brokerage, Keller Williams Legacy, and sorting by price, and then looking at location, because you don't want to work a location, you don't want to drive to for buyers, right? And then she sees who the agents are, and she lead gens our agents for one hour on Monday to line up open houses for the weekend. So she might select three or four homes that interest her and she'll call, let's say I call Shelly for the first one. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Shelly, my name's Alana. I'm a fellow agent legacy with you. Um, I see you have a listing over there, one to three Cookie Road. That's uh, beautiful. I would love to host your open uh, an open house this weekend. Can I do that for you? Now, Shelly's either gonna say to me, oh my God, thank you so much. It's great meeting you, but I already have that lined up. I'll keep you in mind for a future one. Okay, top of mind, cool. Or she's going to be like, oh my God, just went on her contract. Congratulations. Do you have any others coming on the market? Or she's going to be like, yes. Now, if she says the opposite, right, the other one's no and no, right? Let me go to the next agent. I'll be like, hey, Kim, it's Alana with Legacy. I'm an agent here, da da. Same thing. Yes, sir. Usually, if you call three or four, one of them's going to say yes. Or if not for that one, they'll be like, oh, I have a listing going on the market tomorrow. Can you do that? Ask what address to make sure you want to drive there. Because 
working an open house gives you what? You work it for free and agent's not paying you to do an open house. So what are you getting? Leads. You're working it to get leads. You're canvassing the neighborhood around it to maybe find listings. You can market that listing on social media for yourself to put it out in the public, right? You can't say you're the agent of that listing, but you can market it. And then anybody who comes to the open house and everybody who signs in for safety purposes, everybody signs in for safety purposes are now your leads. Now, not everybody's a winner, right? One person's gonna show up, they're already gonna have a signed agent, but you have leads now. So that's the second one. And then the third one is the newest one as of uh, the past year, and it's any online leads. So for example, I know through our Legacy All-Stars, we have a lot of Facebook ad leads and different online leads that we um, provide certain agents with um, who want to work them, actually work them. Uh, so online leads have become the third biggest source, not because they're the fastest turnaround. Online leads are the follow-up game. Everything is a follow-up game, but online leads specifically is a follow-up game. So a really good friend of mine um, from my last Keller Williams office I was at, I was working with her and all of her business came from networking. Everything she did was going to events, networking. She would volunteer places. Everything was in the public. She was a, she's a face-to-face -face person. 2020 hit. Her entire lead sources, she couldn't do. She couldn't do one of them. So she called me. She goes, I think I want to get out of real estate. Now she's an amazing agent. She's wonderful. And I'm like, why? And she goes, I, I can't generate business. I'm like, okay. You can't generate business or we have to think of a different source for you to use to generate business. Hear that? So she, long story short, we chose, she chose through a lot of talking through a bunch of sources. You know what? I'll just pretend like every phone call I make is like I'm just seeing them, right? Like I'm looking at them. And so she started running Facebook ads and she would do about one to two Facebook ads a week, run them for about 10 days each and call them. Now she started that March of 2020. And she's getting leads and calling, getting leads and calling. Now fast, now all of these are adding in her database. We're getting to the 201 in just a minute, okay? It was not until, she was having good conversations, but it wasn't until March, April, May, June. It was four months later that she had her first person say they're ready. But she's calling them every month. She is like a follow-up machine. She's staying top of mind every month, checking in every month. So one person was ready in June. She got two more in July. And then August was like, and she didn't stop running ads. She kept going. But everything she got July and August was from the ads she ran in March and April. So the online leads only choose this as a source if you are going to commit to following up. If you're like, I can't even follow up with calling my friend back, probably not where you want to do. I had a story about this. Please. So I run Facebook ads also. So oh, talk a little louder for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here. Um, <laughs> I run a lot of Facebook ads, and I had a, um, I was driving my car, and, you know, just using my car, you know, speaker thing. I could see the name, I could see the phone number, had no idea who it was, answered it. And this guy's like, hey, this is Eric. How do you do it? And he starts talking about a house that I had sent him. And I'm thinking, I have no idea who this guy is. I just kind of played along through all the conversation. I get to the office and I pull up the man and I realize he was an online lead that within more than a year I had been following up with him and I had left him messages that were coming and he never picked up. And I man had been sending him emails, the man had been sending him texts, and he never replied to any one of those things. Somehow, just by me reaching out to him so often, like he knew that I was with him and I didn't know that he was out of house. You know what I mean? Like it, it built some kind of rapport, even 
answered. Yeah, and here's the thing. Yeah. So I love that story because here's what happened there. She stayed top of mind every month. He's like, oh, mm, there's that Kirsten person, right? right? Like, oh, yep, there's that. Now, of course he didn't reach out. Why did he not reach out? He wasn't ready. Why would they reach out? They're not ready yet. They're not going to reach out to you and say, hi, Shelly, I'm not ready. I'm just reaching out to tell you that. It won't happen. So us as agents get in our own way. We're our worst enemies because we're sitting there going, oh, I tried them once. They didn't call me back. They didn't text me back. They don't want to use me, right? That's a waste of time. That's a bad lead. No, that's not the case. That's all in our head. All of that's made up and false. The truth of it is what? They're not ready. They don't know us. We tried once. Yeah. 13, 14 months. And here's the great thing. She leveraged technology, meaning the database, the database, your database, your database is your, your success system. Your database is your money maker. Your database is your lifeline to the future you want. You need to like put like a whole like poster of like what your database is on a wall. Okay. All right, so here's the magic 201. Ready for it? There was a study done, and this study was across thousands upon thousands upon thousands of agents nationwide over years of research. Okay, so you got these researchers out there, tons of study, right? And what they found is you'll notice here, here's an agent over on this left here that has zero people in their database, okay? And they might get lucky and make about $14,000, which is just enough to pay for all your board fees and your dues and all that stuff, maybe a little extra. And then after taxes, because this is gross commission income, and then after taxes, right? So you're making just enough to pay your annual dues for being in real estate after all that. Did anybody get in real estate for that? Okay, if you did, please come see me. Um, now we add 10 people to our database. Okay, that's a start. If you have a database and you have zero in there, by the way, just becoming an agent, the greatest thing you can do now, like tonight, is pull up like a, a Google Excel or an Excel or some sort of system that you like and just start making like, okay, here's the names of people. Here's phone numbers of them. Do I have their email address? Let me find it, right? Let me stalk them on Facebook and put in their birthdays. So you can start gathering all that together because then when you actually come on over, we have a person who can just go like, whoop, bam, here you go. It's in your database. They'll just put it all in there for you. Um, your phone, there's actually a functionality that you can click import export like you can click import from your phone it will go boop right in command right it doesn't have to be perfect because just putting people in there doesn't produce the results we'll talk about that in a minute so i'm gonna flip i'm gonna move forward here you'll see the growth and you see here all right where's the 200 right 201 right here so when you hit 201 all the way to a thousand Agents average when they work these leads. Not just put them in there, but they have to actually stay in touch with them, stay in contact, right? Build relationships. That's $119,510. Who would like that payday? Right? And as you can see, it goes up from there. So this is actually taken from um, a friend of mine who did a little study at his own location. So uh, a friend of mine is another coach somewhere and what he actually went at his location and determined in their, in their uh, Keller Williams office, total agent count, 
how many agents had less than 201 in their command versus 200 plus. And as you can see, 253 agents had less than 201. Now that might be 200, that might be two. We don't know, doesn't matter. And the agents were averaging about 37,000. And then there's 94 agents that had over 200, 200, 201 or more, whatever the more is, whatever. And they were averaging 127,000 in gross commission income. So this is actually, so the previous slide was a nationwide study done over the years. This was done locally here in Maryland at one location that I know of that my coach is like all about, he's like a numbers fanatic. So I'm like, great, work the numbers, send them to me, right? So he did a numbers comparison of everybody in their market center. So it, we went nationwide and we just brought local. That's a huge difference. That's a big difference. Okay. I'm gonna fast forward that. No, no. No. Okay. So here's the four laws. If you follow these four laws, you can't lose. You cannot lose. You know, great practice is, is take these four laws and save them somewhere. And every single day, look at them. Like have them hanging somewhere, have them on your phone, have them in a binder, wherever you have them, right? Um, have it somewhere handy that you look at daily. And then maybe the end of the day, because here's the thing, in real estate, you're your own boss. We are your support system, but you're your own boss. So at the end of the day, maybe you rate yourself. You're like, all right, today's Wednesday. How'd I do in my four laws today? On a scale of one to 10, no, I'll make it easy, one to five. On a scale of one to five, did I build my database today? Right, how's my database going? Now, build might also be just making it healthier. We'll talk about that in a minute. Did I add anybody to my database today? Did, was there, you know, um, Shelly, you're calling expires. Anybody that you actually talk to, even if they're not ready today, and anybody who you hear the voicemail of to confirm that it's the right number should go in your database, okay? Now, what I suggest doing is make notes as you're calling, have that be your call time, and then after that call time, have a separate time to just update the database with that information. So you're not stop and go and stop and go, because then we lose momentum. So a lot of times we're like, well, I didn't talk to them. Let me not put them in the database. But here's, here's the thing. Let's say that Shelly calls a expired today, Here's a voicemail and the voicemail confirms the name that she sees for the address says Daniel and the voicemail says Daniel. So she knows that's the right number, most likely, right? So if we don't add to the database, how do we remember to call them back? Yes. So I think I'm talking to should I save that? Can I save that? Can I save that? Yep. Okay. Yep. And that we're going to talk about the health score, your database. That's part of it. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Because now, once you put that in your database, you can set a task. Right. You can be like, okay, I'm going to set a task reminder to try them back tomorrow. If I call someone today and leave a message, I'm going to try them the very next day. But again, if you're calling all these people today and tomorrow and the next day and all of that, and you have no reminders, but just paper, What's going to happen? We're going to lose it, right? And then by the time we actually find it again and call them, what's going to happen is they're going to say to you, oh my God, yeah, we just put in the market yesterday with another agent. And you're going to be like, by the way, that's all going to happen. That will happen to all of you. There's no getting around that, but there's a way to lessen it. Communicate with it in a systematic way. Systematic means automated emails, automated texting. Do you have tasks to remind yourself to call them? If we have our, again, our friends and family, our sphere of influence, which starts just like you said, from our phone, are they in our database? That's number one, are they in there even? And then 
what if we all called them and reached out to them between now and the end of the year, or better yet, now and beginning of the year, with just a, hey, how have you been? Just reaching out, touching base. Any plans for the holidays? Hey, I was just thinking about you. It's been a while. What's new in your life? You don't have to talk real estate in that first call. Just reconnect this time of year, right? Happy this, happy, there's so many happies, right? Happy Halloween, happy Thanksgiving, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, happy new year, right? We have so many things and so many ways we can call someone and say something right now. Use it. And then service all the leads that come your way. I use the example of the expires. That's one example of servicing that lead, right? You have some leads that were handed to you. So as you're calling them, servicing them means putting them in to follow up, right? Um, if leads are sent to you through command through our coaching program, what are you doing with them? Are you putting notes in? Are you putting them on smart plans? Are you following up more than once? On average, it takes, it used to be five, now it's six. So I'm going to use word six. On average, it takes five to seven. I'll use that. It takes five to seven attempts of a person, not a sphere of influence, but everybody else, five to seven attempts for them to actually get back to us because we're strangers. Why are they, they're not in real estate. They're not answering their phone, right? Does everybody have the four laws? Okay. Now, I'm not gonna go through all these, but where do your contacts come from? Here's the thing, you need to pick three sources. Three sources. I recommend right now in today's market, having four actually. We're in a different market right now. Um, to hit your goals, you kind of need four. Unless one of these is really, really huge. Like if you have a huge sphere, like huge, like you have like thousands of people on your phone. Okay, we can work through that, right? Um, so I want you to take, okay, I want you to take 30 seconds right now. Now, 45 seconds, 45 seconds right now. Look at this list. And I want you to write down three of them that might interest you. Now, if you have one in mind that's not on this list, go ahead, you can write that down instead. This is not all encompassing this list. There's literally 50 different ways to get business. All right. Someone want to share what they wrote down? Now, you might not know how to do these. You might be like, I don't, I don't know how to do that, but it sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because was it expired, like combined. Okay. So networking being like you want to get out there. Okay. By the way, networking doesn't have to be business networking. Networking can be anything. It's networking is literally you joining any groups to meet up with different people in those groups. Okay. So now it's the implementation of that is figuring out how often do you want to do that? What are the types of groups? How often do they meet? What do you want that to look like for your week? Right. When you go to those networking events, go with a goal. Right now, that goal in the beginning might be I want to at least connect with three new people, share information back and forth to be able to put them in my database and stay in touch. And then, maybe as you get used to it, maybe it's now five people. Um, same with social media, creating a system around it. What does that look like? Now, posting on social media is marketing, is branding. That's going to be a longer term takes usually about a year to grow that to see business from it. So in social media, do we want to run ads? Do we want to DM people, private message people to just touch base through that, right? It's kind of like texting, but through social media, that's a great way to communicate. And then obviously for sale by owners expired, how often do you want to call them? What days do you want to call them, right? What numbers do you want to put around that? 
if in your week you're like, this doesn't work, the first question I always ask the agent is, well, how many did you actually talk to? If you say anything less than 25, I'm going to say you didn't talk to enough people for it to work. If you come back, you're like, I talked to eight. Eight people, this doesn't work. I'm going to be like, that's because you talked to eight people. It won't work with eight people. There's laws of numbers with everything. Does everybody else have some things written down? Oh, thank you. So here's the thing. You need to pick your sources. And then what's the, so I'll say this. What is, if you do not have 200, 201 people in your database right now, or getting prepared to go in a database, you can prep it right now. You can be all like up front with it, right? So then you're like ready to hit the ground running. That's the first step. The first step is what's my first bucket that I'm going to start putting in my database? And how do I want to do that systematically? Do I want to add, reach out to 10 a day, put 10 in, right? So I'm going to put 10 in, reach out, and then make it healthy. So you brought up email addresses. So do you have their full name? I have a lot of people in my database I literally have the first name of because I, I took people I had from LinkedIn from years ago. And I don't know why it downloaded is just first names for some of them or like a letter. Like it's like, but I'm like, I have information. They're going in. Right. Do you have their email address? If not, why don't you reach out and just be like, hey, it's been a while. How have you been? Connect, 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 relationship, relationship, conversation. Hey, by the way, what's the best email for you these days? You can add someone if you have phone and email. Oh, sorry. If you have just name and email, add them. Because then you can email to try to get their phone number. Mailing address is a sweet spot. There is the greatest, greatest smart plan automation email system that is 171,000 agents use nationwide. That when you have a person's address, or if you happen to know like all your expires, by the way, we can do this with because you have their address. Um, or if you know somebody and where they're looking, you can use that neighborhood or that that town or that city. When you have that in there, so when I said I put I put 1,700 people, 1,900 people on a smart plan back in uh, 2019, I put them on one smart plan. I set them. I set all of them up with a neighborhood or address. I didn't have everybody's address. Some people, I'm like, I know they live in Howard County. I'm just going to pick Columbia. That just sounds great, right? Or, oh, I know they're somewhere in Baltimore. So let me just pick a whole bunch of Baltimore places, right? They can change it, right? That's a, we do have a class. Kirsten teaches a great class called Smart Plans where she walks through how to do this. You don't know their birthday? Stock Facebook. Everybody's birthday's there, right? Just go to Facebook. Has um, anybody received a text from us, the leadership team, regarding your birthday? Yes. You did? Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. Ready for it? We went, and when my daughter was here at the front desk, I actually had her go into the system, look up everybody's birthday, because we have to have them from when you joined. And she manually went into the database and ed ed clicked edit, add birthday, edit, add birthday to every one of our 300 plus agents here. And then we put all of you on a birthday smart plan, which does automate text and automate emails. Don't tell people, but now you know the secret, right? Now you know the secret. Wasn't that nice? I'm gonna fast forward this, technology, technology. So. Command has a lot of things. These, so we talked about your phone. I'm gonna bring it, bring it right back around. We talked about your phone. Your phone has apps, right? Messenger app, command app, bank app, Facebook app, Instagram app, WhatsApp app, right? So many different. I have games on mine, right? I got Sudoku. I love my, I love me some Sudoku. Okay, that's my like travel buddy. Command is your phone. This is your phone for your business. These are your apps. You have an app to store people. 
You put people on your phone. You have contacts. Your, they did not magically put those contacts did not magically appear on your phone. You had to at one point in time put them in there. This is your new phone. Think of it that way. It just doesn't replace your phone. You can set automated tasks. You can set reminders, smart plans. There's a class on that, but these are all different. Think of this as your this is your apps for your business. And the command app for your phone allows you to then have this at your fingertips. Does that give you a different way to look at it at all? For some people who've like been around for a little bit. Right? And by the way, let me go back real quick. If this is not at 201, that is the only place to stay. Just hang out right there. I don't care about any of these others. Now, you'll learn them. Smart plans and opportunities are the two that you want to learn next. Opportunities, because that's your pipeline and also how you get paid. Smart plans, because that's your automation. Right? That saves you time in your life. But this is where you want to live for a while. By the way, I don't care if it takes you all until the rest of this year or even six months. This is not a race. We talked about birthdays. We talked about mailing addresses. Uh, we talked about email addresses. We talked about phone numbers. Um, happy to send these slides to everybody so you can actually have all the verbiage if you want. We're not doing the activity. Oh, look at this an evaluation. Um. What are you taking from this, right? So three was what? So three and 201, what was the three? So we talked about the two the two numbers you wanna focus on. There's the number three. Three sources. three sources, have three sources. Have three sources. Now you may change sources, but you cannot delete and not replace. If after 60 days of trying it, not a week, don't flip flop a week, if you're like, mm, let me try a new one next week. Let me try a new one next week. You can't master anything, okay? Mastery, all right? You can't master something in a week. It's not possible. That's like me picking up a guitar right now and learning how to play. I touched a guitar when I was like six years old and not since, all right? So give it time. But if all of a sudden after, you know, 45, 60 days, you're like, wow, I truly don't like this. I don't like this source. I hate networking events. Cool. Never go to another networking event ever again, but replace it with something. You have to replace it. Okay, the laws three. And then what's 201? Contacts where? Where are we putting them? In a database, meaning in a technology platform that you're going to use that is automation built into it. So we can get that going. Ooh, let me look at that. Yes, love that again. Database, yes. A lot of people call it the data bank. You feed it, it's your bank, okay? Um, okay, so this slide up here is because I am a KWU approved trainer. Um, and Kirsten is working to become one. She just got approved to, she just got the approval to apply, by the way, which is, there's only a, so there's 189,000 agents nationwide and there's only a, hmm? in Keller Williams. In Keller Williams, in Kel, so Keller Williams has about 189,000 agents nationwide and KW approved trainers, there's only 150. So whatever that percentage is. So, yeah. so I just got mine. She's, getting the approval. So to keep it, to allow us to keep that certification, uh, we need evaluations. Also with evaluations, we love the feedback. Now your name's not on it. We won't see it. So you can be as brutal as you want, but please don't. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so if you wouldn't mind going on your phone, just to kwueval.com, or you can scan the code or barcode. Region is Maryland, D.C. Even if you're online, just throw in person on here. 
If you want to pick virtual, that's fine too. It actually doesn't really matter. If you're in-person, pick in-person. If you're online, pick virtual. Usually in-person means that like the trainer was in person. Um, there is no title for 201 plus. We just like to title that. So you'll see in the drop down MREA, systematizing lead gen. Oko's not working. I will have to fix that for the future. Um, once you do that and click next, by the way, this will take literally 30 seconds once you're in. Uh, once you do that and click next, um, you're gonna see a drop down for course instructor name. Mine starts with an I, I-L-A-N-A. -A. Just so you know, anybody who is in Kirsten's class coming up and all the future ones, just a uh, little heads up and favored. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Let me pull that back up. Oh, no, 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 no. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oops, I want to share. Slideshow. There we go. So if you scroll all the way down on the M's, you'll see MREA and then systematize the chip. I'm trying to think which one this fit under. And I'm like, what title would this be? Because they don't have a 201. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good. Oh, well, yeah, it works. Um, and I really appreciate you doing this. For any of you, again, uh, so one of the things Kirsten is you'll see in many of her classes. By the way, please hold her accountable. Oh yeah. Please hold her accountable because <laughs> along her approval process regarding recommendations and all of these different things and feedback forms, um, she needs a certain number of surveys. So, so what are you gonna take away? What are you gonna implement? Uh, you 
are welcome to just hang out here if you're going to take your hand class also. I'm going to just introduce you to Brandon before we start here as he walked in. And thanks for coming. I'm going to turn off Alana's computer here. What's that? I would love to do the, 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 the